Aloha everyone. This is Jeremiah with Campus Ministry on behalf of uh, COH Ministry. Uh, we just welcome you all to this wonderful Ash Wednesday of 2021. I don't know why, I just feel a lot more joyful uh, for Ash, and Ash Wednesday and Lent this year than I did last year. I think there's a number of reasons why uh, our world is slowly getting to a point where we get to see a lot more people and uh, safely and things are, I feel like on, on an uptick, even though it is a time of, you know, somber kind of fasting and abstaining and, uh, you know, all of that with Lent, I just, I don't know, there's just a sense of joy. And today at, uh, we had mass at the Mystical Rose Oratory and it was, it was, I would say almost at capacity. Um, and it was great to see some of you students that are joining us today and faculty and staff. So um, welcome again to another continuing uh, day of our uh, kind of celebration of this Lenten season as we begin. Um, today we have a very special presenter that's with us and uh, I'll introduce him in just a moment, but I'd like to start us off by uh, offering a prayer, asking God's blessing for our time together and uh and we'll just go from there so again thank you all for joining us uh if you haven't already uh you could go ahead and mute your audio and uh, we are recording this session so uh, just to let you guys know as well but we'll go ahead and get started and ask god for his uh blessings over our time so let us begin in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen Today, God our Father brings us to the beginning of Lent. We pray that in this time of salvation, he will fill us with the Holy Spirit, purity of hearts, and strengthen us in love. So let us humbly ask him that, God, we may be filled and satisfied by the word which you give us. Teach us to be loving, not only in great and exceptional moments, but above all in the ordinary events of daily life. May we abstain from what we do not really need and help our brothers and sisters in distress. May we bear the wounds of your son in our bodies for through his body, he gave us life. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. All right. Well, uh, many of you guys know our, our presenter. You've got to speak to him before. He is um, a, a wonderful man who is not just about, uh, you know, his own vocation and, and letting that be uh, something that he keeps to himself, but he is out with God's people. And uh, whether that be in church or out on a hike somewhere on a mountain in Hawaii, uh, wherever it may be, uh, he is with God's people. And so, um, just by way of introduction, with Hawaiian family roots in Hawaii that extends back to the monarchy of King Kalakaua, Bishop Larry Silva has always had an affection for the people of God here in the islands. In 2005, after 31 plus years of priesthood in California, Pope Benedict XVI appointed him to be the fifth bishop of Honolulu, where he has been where we have been blessed to have him not only as a bishop but as a dear friend to so many and so without further ado i welcome and say a warm aloha to bishop larry silva thank you jeremiah it's uh, good to be with all of you here this afternoon uh aloha from Kauai. i'm here on Kauai primarily for uh, uh the ordination of a couple of deacons on Friday, among other things. So uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, this is, of course, as Jeremiah mentioned, and as some of the, the foreheads are indicating, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. And uh, so it, it doesn't seem like a time when we should be talking about sharing joy, uh, because we usually think of uh, Ash Wednesday and Lent as, as uh, more of a time of a, a penance and a repentance and so on. But I, I think it really is meant to be a time of joy as well. And I'd like to share uh, a little bit about a different perspective on joy than perhaps we normally think about. 
Uh, let me begin with uh, this reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, starting at verse 11. Now, this is uh, the Last Supper from the Last Supper discourse. So remember, Jesus knows that he is going to be betrayed by one of his 12 closest disciples. He knows he's going to be crucified. He knows uh, what is going to happen to him. And so he's at the table with his disciples and he says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I've heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. So here is Jesus at uh, one of the most difficult moments of his life, and he is talking about joy. And he's talking about sharing that joy with others. Uh, when we think of uh, joy, we perhaps think uh, more of a, like a Coca-Cola commercial where everybody's uh, singing and dancing and partying and having a wonderful time. Uh, we don't always think of joy in other contexts. I had a, a very beautiful experience on Christmas afternoon, this uh, past Christmas. Uh, one of our priests, Father Scott Bush, was in hospice, he was dying. And I went to see him to take him viaticum, the communion for the dying. And uh, after I gave him communion, uh, he basically gave a, like a five minute speech uh, that was amazing. Now he was suffering, he was in bed, he was, uh, uh, you know, his kidneys were failing, uh, he knew he was dying but he actually wanted to die that day because he knew that there would be joy in heaven. And so basically he talked about how blessed he had been to be a priest uh, with all the, the wonders that God had uh, entrusted to him of calling him to be a priest, uh, all of the people that he met, he talked about all of the lives that he was able to touch and that uh, in his life, he really only wanted to serve people and that uh, he was looking forward to uh, going to heaven and continuing to serve there. Uh, he wasn't going to stop. It wasn't just about him and his enjoying eternal life. It was uh, that he wanted to, uh, to serve it from heaven to pray for all of us down here below that need prayers. So this was a, a man who was suffering a great deal, who was, you know, days away from death. And yet um, he was joyful. There was a real joy that was palpable. You could hardly hear the words coming out of his mouth because he didn't have a lot of energy. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, there was no, there was no singing, there was no dancing, there was no uh, um, carrying on. It was just very stark, but it was joyful. And I think that's the kind of real joy that the Lord wants us to have. Yes, there are those moments where we sing and dance and, and party and, and there's that, that joy that is, uh, you know, we're thankful for. 
But there are other kinds of joy, I think, that um, that are not so uh, obviously uh, wonderful, but that can uh, really change us. On uh, February 6th, we celebrated the feast of uh, the uh, Paul Miki and the uh, martyrs who died as missionaries in Nagasaki, Japan. And uh, this was uh, between 1564 and 1566. Now, Paul uh, was a Jesuit priest and uh, he was uh, being crucified uh, because I guess the, the, uh, the emperor thought, well, you're pe preaching Christ crucified uh, and, you know, this is illegal because he's not our God uh, that we worship. And so uh, let's give you a taste of your own medicine. Uh, so they were being crucified. There were, um, you know, this is perhaps half a dozen to a dozen of them that were being crucified. So he's hanging on the cross, dying, and um, this is what he says. I am sure that none of you would suppose I want to deceive you. And so I tell you plainly, there is no way to be saved except the Christian way. My religion teaches me to pardon my enemies and all who have offended me. I do gladly pardon the emperor and all who have sought my death, I beg them to seek baptism and be Christians themselves. Then he looked at his comrades and began to encourage them in their final struggle. Joy glowed in all their faces and in Lewis's most of all. When a Christian in the crowd cried out to him that he would soon be in heaven, his hands, his whole body strained upward with such joy that every eye was fixed on him. Now here is someone being crucified uh, and there is this intense joy uh, that is filling his heart. That isn't something that we normally think about uh, that, uh, you know, that this is a moment of joy. You know, this is a payment, a moment of pain, of suffering, of rejection, but no, for, for him and for all of them, it was a moment of joy because uh, they were laying down their lives for the Lord and for the, uh, the people uh, that, to whom they had preached the gospel. And in fact, you know, although uh, even today, uh, Christianity has not taken root very much at all in uh, Japan, Nagasaki is probably the most Catholic city in the country. And that was due to the, the joy of these missionaries who uh, were put to death and people remembered that. People did not forget that. Um, on uh, later, later in March, we will be celebrating the feast of uh, Saints Perpetua and Felicity. And uh, the, the, uh, we have a reading uh, that describes their martyrdom. Now their martyrdom was being thrown to the wild beasts. So the leopards or lions or whatever they had in, in those days. Um, and so uh, it says of Perpetua, the others stood motionless and received the death blow in silence, especially Satyrus, who had gone up first and was first to die. He was helping Perpetua. But Perpetua, that she might experience the pain more deeply, rejoiced over her broken body and guided the shaking hand of the inexperienced gladiator to her throat. Such a woman, one before whom the unclean spirit trembled, could not perhaps have been killed had she not herself willed it. Bravest and happiest of martyrs. So here again, we have these uh, 
people who are suffering tremendously. You know, they're in the arena, they're being torn apart by uh, wild animals, and uh, they're joyful. Uh, so how could that be? How how is that possible? Except that they were joyful because they knew Jesus, and He can give us a joy that no one can take away from us. He can give us a joy that uh, isn't always singy dancy, but is a joy that is very real. Even when we're going through sufferings, even when we're going through trials. And so as we go through Lent, of course, we don't, as I said, we don't normally think of Lent as a season of great joy, uh, yet it is meant to be a season of joy because we are called to renew ourselves in Christ and to renew that relationship of love with Jesus Christ so that we'll be better prepared to celebrate the greatest event in the history of the world, which is the death and resurrection of Jesus. No event in the history of the world has ever had such effect as that event. Um, and so that's what we're preparing to celebrate during Lent. So we uh, devote ourselves to fasting. Uh, why? It's a deprivation. It's, you know, not enjoying things that are good for us, basically. So it's not just to like lose weight or to, uh, uh, you know, get, get in shape but it's it's really to help us better appreciate all of the gifts that God has given us that we often take for granted. It is meant to, to uh, this fasting is meant to give us great joy because it helps us realize how much we are blessed, how many things we have, the food on our tables every day, uh, the, the blessings that we're given. We're called during Lent to uh, prayer, to deeper prayer. And uh, yes, we can uh, very often uh, go through prayer exercises. We can do a rosary, we can go to mass, we can do all these things. That's wonderful. But our prayer needs to be communication, real communication with someone who loves us more than we could possibly imagine. And so getting into the word of God, uh, listening to the voice of, of God in that word, listening to the voice of Jesus is meant to touch our hearts and change our hearts and fill them with joy. Uh, does it take some dedication? Yes. Does it take some discipline? Yes. But uh, the, uh, the joy that we will feel if we dedicate ourselves to more prayer and deeper prayer, I think will be uh, certainly well worth the effort. And then the third thing that we are called to do during Lent is almsgiving. That is to share our resources with those who are more in need than we are with the poor. Now, um, I know college students struggle quite a bit financially. You're not uh, rich, you're probably, uh, you know, trying to save a penny here or save a dollar there. Um, but nevertheless, no matter what we have, uh, if we're willing to share it with others, the Lord will multiply it. He will, uh, he will uh, never let us be with, uh, never let us be destitute if we share what we have. And so that almsgiving is meant not only to care for those who have none, uh, whether that be no food, no clothing, no house, housing, um, but really it's meant to help us um, be more generous as God is generous toward us. And so these things can be a drudgery or they can be a joy. And I think they really are meant to be a joy. Uh, they, they might, there might be some drudgery to them. There might be some uh, discipline that uh, 
we have to commit ourselves to so that we can be better disciples of the Lord. Uh, but if we do that, if we take the time, if we take the uh, effort to do that, uh, we will be richly rewarded. You know very well that with friendships, the more you invest yourself in a friendship, the more you can get out of that friendship, the more uh, joy it will bring you. And so, uh, uh, so it is the same with uh, the Lord. Uh, I remember a priest saying uh, during a retreat I was at uh, that the, the ways of friendship are exactly the ways of prayer. So if we think of the joy that we have in friendship, even though sometimes there are ups and downs, there are good moments and there are bad moments, if we invest ourselves in that, uh, that's very much like prayer. And so I hope that uh, you will uh, be attentive to joy and to sharing that joy with others because it is meant to be uh, pandemically contagious, uh, if you will, uh, to, to be shared with all the world because it is based on our love of the Lord and most of all on his love for us. So I will open it up to questions, Jeremiah. Wonderful, thank you, Bishop. Um, yeah, so at this time, uh, students or anyone, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to uh, either type some of those or uh, to share a little bit. But uh, I know there's a couple of questions that uh, uh, some others had asked beforehand. Uh, Bishop, what are what are some types uh, of penance uh, that you know people would experience or get maybe from uh, going to confession? And wh why such a difference? You know, I think somebody was asking, for example, well, you know, why why ten Hail Marys and or three Our Fathers, and what wh what's kind of the uh, the philosophy or maybe the theology behind uh, all of that? So, uh, again, about penance, uh, a little bit more about penance, and and why the different types of uh, penances that are that are given. Okay, well. When we go to confession, of course, we are forgiven our sins. The Lord completely forgives us. But very often there are temporal, um, we say punishments or temporal consequences to our sins. So um, you, uh, um, you um, break somebody's car window intentionally. Um, and then you regret it and you apologize and the person forgives you. The car window is still broken, right? So somebody has to take care of the car window. Somebody has to fix it. So uh, that uh, is what a penance is about, to, to try as much as possible to be reconciled to God and to the others whom we have hurt by our sins. And so penances can vary. Sometimes um, I, I think a, an easy penance might be just to say some, some prayers that we know. And sometimes that's, that's all that's needed because a person feels guilty enough and feels like, uh, you know, he doesn't deserve to be forgiven. And that's a beautiful way just to say, you know, you don't really have to do a lot of uh, um, a lot more. Just thank God, just be with God, spend time with Him in these prayers. Okay. Now, sometimes we'll give a penance that is more specific. So very often, um, so for example, if if somebody confesses gossiping about somebody or mistreating somebody, I might give a penance of. Uh, praying for that person, you know, or doing something good for that person, uh, or saying something nice about that person. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a counterbalance to the sin that we have committed. Um, if, uh, 
you know, if someone has stolen uh, you, and, you know, they can make restitution, uh, that's good. If they can't without, you know, being arrested or whatever, uh, then maybe they could do some other thing like giving that amount of money that they stole to the poor. Um, so that might be a penance that, that would be suggested to somebody. So it really is, it varies on the, the, the penitent and the priest and the discernment of, you know, what's needed at that point. Uh, but it's really meant to kind of solidify the forgiveness and the reconciliation that is meant to take place during that sacrament. Great, Bishop, thank you. Um, another, another question that came in, um, I guess this is kind of a little bit more general perhaps, but um, how do you stop bad or like evil thoughts from coming to mind? How do we, how do we stop, you know, these kind of you know, and it's not you're trying, they just kind of come. And I think that was the question yep. you know, the person was asking, how did you yep. stop that, you know, from happening? Yeah. Uh, well, sometimes you can't stop them. They, they just come, as you said. Um, but um, when you, uh, when they come, then what do you do with them? Do you kind of play with them and enjoy them and, uh, you know, uh, fondle them, if you will, or do you try to let them go and think other thoughts, think, you know, better thoughts? Uh, so, um, you know, I think uh, we have the power to do that and the grace is given us to, to do that, uh, but to, to prevent them from coming probably not possible. Um, they're, they're probably going to come and then you just have to learn a constructive way to deal with them. Thanks, uh, any others, other, other questions? So as I, as I mentioned, you know, Bishop's got a lot of experience. I mean, 31 plus years as a priest and, you know, he's been a bishop here at the diocese for quite a while. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of experience from his time of ministry um, throughout this time. And um, so please, anyone uh, that may have some questions or uh, something that they were kind of wondering about, you can ask that, you know, at this time. Okay, uh, we got one that just came in. Uh, this Lenten season, many of us may give something up to show our solitude for the season. Uh, what if we are to fail at what we gave up? What is a good way to overcome that obstacle? I think you're on mute. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, first of all, to be aware that you have uh, slipped and slipped, um, and then to just resolve to get back on track um, and to not beat yourself up about it. Uh, I think, you know, we all can slip from time to time. Uh, if it's uh, slipping into a sin, then, you know, maybe it, it'd be best to go to confession to, uh, to be reconciled in that way. But if it's, uh, you know, a, a particular penitential practice that you've decided to do uh, and uh, you slip up on it, then just uh, be aware of it, shake yourself up get back up and start over. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's no shame to, uh, to fail. 
but don't let the failure uh, drag you down into more failure. Bishop, I have a question. Um, so as young adults, so I talk to a lot of young adults about like the um, confession um, and a lot of people, there's a sense of fear, um, I guess, um, not, or not necessarily fear, but I guess a lot of shame. And I know sometimes um, they avoid confession because of the idea like, 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 um, Will the priest remember her or, you know, like, so is it common? Um, like, do you feel like, how can the church, I guess, educate confession in a better way? Because I feel like there is a little bit of a stigmatism to um, going to penance and going to confession because again, it just, uh, I don't know. And then, you know, like um, in the many different Christian faiths, why can't we just, you know, go to God, you know, for, for all of that. So I don't know if that was a question or. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, good. that's good. Okay. Thanks, Rhea. Um, first of all, um, we all uh, sin. I mean, we, we all need to get back on track. And so uh, it's meant to be a healing for us, get, getting us uh, uh, back where we should be. Um, so it should be looked at as a, uh, a healing thing. Now, that being said, I will tell you that we probably have a fear about it too, and a shame about it too, because uh, um, you know, nobody likes to admit that they have failed, uh, that they have done something wrong. Um, nobody likes to admit that. But if, uh, if we do admit it, then we, uh, then we can start to overcome it and we can let the Lord work on us to overcome it. Now, with regard to the, uh, of course, you understand that when you go to confession to a priest, uh, he is obliged never to divulge anything that you have said in confession, okay? So, um, you know, and he, he can be excommunicated if he does that. Um, it's, it's that serious. So you can be assured that whatever you tell him and stay there. You can also be assured that, you know, especially if he's a, a little more experienced priest, he's probably heard it before. You know, you're probably not the first time, first one that uh, uh, told him that. So don't, don't worry about it. Um, and even if it, it is the first time he's heard it, um, you know, it's, it's, he's the representative of the Lord in that sacrament. And so you're really telling the Lord. Now, why don't you just tell the Lord directly? You know, okay, well, of course you should. And that's the preparation of, of, for uh, confession, sacrament of penance. But um, there is something psychologically freeing when we say it out loud. Um, you know, Jesus, uh, uh, God did not send us a savior as a spirit. He sent us a human being. So there is an incarnational aspect to our faith. And so uh, that's why the, even the, the sacrament of reconciliation or penance is incarnational. That is, you know, there, there's an encounter with a human person who represents Christ in that sacrament. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when somebody is an alcoholic, it's very unlikely that they're going to change until they are admit that they have a problem and they say out loud, I'm an alcoholic. 
the, that's those are the first steps in healing okay and i think it's the same spiritually as well that uh, you know we can i i can keep something in to myself i can say well i talked to the lord and he's forgiven me but unless i confess it it's still with me it still stays with me there's something about saying it out loud and receiving that absolution that purges me that helps me to uh, to feel that that burden is lifted off my shoulders so uh, so i think there is a, a real psychological and spiritual advantage to speaking your sins to a priest with the assurance that um, he's never going to say anything to anybody about it, nor bring it up to you again. You know? uh, Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bishop, uh, another, uh, I believe, a kind of a question, yeah, basically a question, but one of our uh, students had noticed um, you were on a, a documentary that had um, uh, the nuclear missile false alarm, and they saw that you had granted, uh, you know, I think it may have been pen like an absolution to everyone uh, at mass in the morning. And so the student was wondering um, if you learned any valuable lessons from that experience and uh, could you share that with, uh, with the group? Okay, that's, um, uh, I gave general absolution. Um, how many of you remember that day? I think it was 2019 or 2018, January 13th, I believe. Uh, we got the missile alert uh, text. Um, and uh, so my first thought was, okay, well, what can I do um, that's helpful and going to help people? And I remembered that our deacon candidates and their wives were in the chapel just finishing mass. So I went down and I said, well, we may die in a matter of moments here. So, you know, there's not time to hear confessions uh, of everybody. So the church has this, uh, uh, for such circumstances, general absolution. So I gave absolution to everybody and said, you know, your sins are forgiven. The Lord forgives you your sins. If we survive and, you know, and you do have a mortal, grievous, serious sin, then you do have to go confess that. Um, but otherwise, you know, your sins are forgiven. So that's uh, something that, uh, you know, the, the church, the bride of Christ has in its toolkit, if you will, um, for such occasions as that. There wasn't time to know whether we're going to, you know, survive more than another five minutes or two minutes, so uh, it was kind of a quick thing. Now uh, there are some people who think we ought to do that more often, but I think it kind of gets us off the hook a little too easily, and uh, we don't we don't engage in that saying our sin out loud. We don't engage in that you know, um, that verbalization of it. And there's something that is healing about that very act itself. And so I think um, it is something that if, if you know, there were a tsunami heading our way and we we're gonna hit in, uh, you know, uh, 20 minutes or something, then I might consider doing that. But otherwise, I think the, the regular way Pardon me? Pardon me? I think uh, somebody's, somebody's mic was just uh, unmuted. Go ahead, Bishop. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. So, so
So that's what I did though. I gave them a general absolution that morning. Yeah, that was uh, quite the thoughts, experience. Thoughts about Lent or... You see it as a time of renewal or just kind of a, a pain. <laughs> What, one question, uh, Bishop, that, uh, another question was, uh, what are some suggestions you might give for Christians, Catholics, um, to experience joy during the season of Lent? Okay. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, to get to know Jesus better. Uh, to spend time with the word, to spend time with the sacraments, uh, because this is someone who loves us more than we can possibly imagine. And uh, how can we not be joyful in being in the presence of someone who loves us so much? So I, I would say that would be the, the first thing, prayer. Um, then, you know, reaching out to others. Uh, Maybe there are people who are lonely, maybe people who are not accepted, who are uh, kind of on the margins of uh, our social groups and uh, reaching out to them might be uh, a penance in a, in a way, you know, because it takes, takes a bit of commitment. It takes us out of ourselves, of our comfort zones. And yet uh, we might find that uh, we have some new friends uh, and uh, can, can really touch lives that otherwise would stay lonely and isolated. Um, I think uh, to think of people in your life who are in need, uh, whether that's you know an elderly person that needs uh, errands done or cleaning done around the house or uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, you know, somebody younger who needs tutoring or uh, maybe help with sports uh, skills because they're not doing too well and they kind of feel bad about themselves. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of people around us who are suffering from uh, in one way or another. And I think whatever we can do to notice them and to reach out to them concretely is going to uh, bring us joy. Not only them, but it'll bring us joy uh, because there is joy in serving others. Great, Great suggestion, Bishop. Thank you. Um, everyone, we just have a, a couple more minutes. Um, for, for our Q&A, any, any last uh, questions or thoughts? I know there's gotta be something, somebody's wondering about something I could, uh, you know, the Bishop of Honolulu has to know. Yeah. So I, I don't have a question, uh, Bishop, uh, but I just wanted to share this. I mean, because I know there's a lot of students here and I'm one of the faculty at the School of Nursing and I do go to the cathedral, but since the pandemic, um, uh, you know, initially watching the, the church uh, through um, the, the live stream and, and things like that, I try my best to go on Saturdays if, if I can, because there's no reservation and everything. But I think that, you know, I know that during the Lenten season, you know, our the goal is to to get to know Jesus a lot more. But just personally, I just want to share that you know, since the pandemic hit, I have actually learned that now, no matter what, I have to spend that five to ten minutes in the morning before I start my day, and I make time because I love my sleep. Uh, but I make time to spend just you know, I have a, a, a it's not a, the Bible, but a reading. Um, that I do every morning and it always speaks to me. And that has been really very helpful for me. 
And uh, I have a young uh, boy um, who I always would share with him what the reading is all about to see if it relates to him. I mean, he's doing distance education, but I think for the young people that are here, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time. Um, I mean, if you can, that's, that's wonderful. But if you make it a routine, it almost like it becomes a fabric of who you are. And then that's where you find that, uh, that joy in, in what you do, right? Uh, and, and then, you know, if you have, have those extra moments, like at night, if I'm not too tired, then I have another uh, reading book that I used. Uh, if I can, you know, if I'm not too tired at, at the end of the day. So I just want to share that with all of you. Again, it's, it's just, I, I know my students would always hear me say, well, maybe let's go pray to God. You know, I always either start a, a class either with a short prayer. Uh, and that's the wonderful thing about, you know, teaching at Shamanad, right? Uh, or just a little reflection, you know, because I know our students and faculty are having difficulty, especially uh, in the sense of isolation. So I would always tell students, even if it's just through chat, when they're in synchronous classroom with me and being able to reach out to a friend because they notice something like in a Zoom like this and something just doesn't make any sense. I think that's the joy, the joy of giving a little bit of your time, a, a little bit of what you can give, I think, is, is what I was gonna kind of say. Yeah, that's great. That's great, thank you. And, and um, you know, I, I think one of the, if I may follow up on one of your points, uh, you said you start off with just a couple minutes of prayer, or, you know, just a, a short time. Uh, sometimes we may make a resolution, oh, I want to pray more, and so I'm going to pray for half an hour, okay? Well, then you, but you're not used to that. And so you, it lasts maybe a couple of days, and then you fall off, and it's 15 minutes, and then it's 10 minutes, and then it's nothing. So gradually build up a habit of prayer you know start with two minutes five minutes and then and then gradually increase it um because it, it will bring you joy and it will kind of help you stabilize your life in in many ways um but uh don't uh, don't bite off more than you can chew um let and don't don't be impatient with yourself just go at it step at a time. And remember that prayer is about Jesus coming to you too, and that he wants to open, uh, for you to open his heart to him so that you can listen to him. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Edna, for that. Practical, these are just practical examples of, you know, our daily walk with uh, a very personal and loving God. Yeah. But we have to make the effort. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Last call. Anything else? Well, Bishop, uh, it's uh, been a pleasure having you with us. That was a quick, almost hour right there, just to be able to, to listen and share. And um, thank you all for the, the questions for Bishop. Thank you, Dr. Edna, for your um, experience and sharing of uh, what has been helpful and, and you know, this time of Lent. These little, these little things of, of just being able to take a gradual step um, can definitely lead to somewhere where it's by the end of this, we celebrate the resurrection in, in the fullness of joy, I think, um, you know, as a family, as a community together, and it just makes it that much more special, you know, with each other. So thank you all for joining us today. Thank you very much again, uh, Bishop Larry, for um, being a, such a, a dear friend to us all, a, a pastor, and, um, you know, I, I can't thank you enough for um, taking time out. In fact, Bishop has to leave right after this. He's going to another uh, another parish here in a little bit too. So it's just back to back. So we just thank you, Bishop, on behalf of Shamanad and our campus ministry for, for having us. Um, before we end, I'm going to ask two things. Uh, Rhea is going to do a, a little uh, uh, 
announcement for some upcoming things uh, here at the university. But then after that, Bishop Larry, if we could have uh, your blessing at the very end of that, and then we'll we'll just close out, and that'll be our, our time together. Okay. Is that all right? Wonderful. Yes. So right thank you. Yes. Great. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Um, just a reminder, if you didn't give uh, me your student ID number, please send that to me directly when you have the chance. Um, okay. So these are our announcements. Um, tonight we have our Ash Wednesday Mass at the Mystical Rose. It's at 6.30, so there's still enough time. So if you haven't made it out, um, please go and check it out um, tonight. Um, our next Share the Joy is going to be February 24th, The Joy of Scientists scientific discovery with Dr. Claire Wright. Um, same time, same room number, you guys know. Um, for the Chaminade Scholars, uh, we have the virtual uh, retreat coming up. So we already have the form sent out. So please check your email and fill out that form to pick what day you can come. It's going to be February 26th to the 28th. And you just pick one of the days out of the three. And it's a virtual retreat. Um, if you guys don't already know, our SLIF small groups have open signups and we're opening signups for the next two weeks. So if you are interested, scan the QR code and you can sign up. This is a great opportunity for you guys during the Lenten season to build community, um, to pray with one another. Um, and yeah, so if you guys are interested in building intentional friendships and community, please sign up for our LIF small groups. Um, we have quite a bit of groups that are forming, so sign up. Um, we have Lecture Divina every Monday during the lunch hour at 1230 with the same Zoom room number. You can find that information on our Instagram. So please check that out if you need an opportunity to pray. This is great for, again, for the Lenten season. Um, fourth nights, um, 630 on Monday nights. Again, um, this is an opportunity to build community with your other um, fellow Chaminade uh, students. Um, and then these are all the Marianist Leader workshops coming up. So if you haven't already um, registered, please check it out. Um, these are great workshop, workshops for you guys um, as students. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, intramural um, volleyball. I'm not sure if signups are still up yet or if they maxed out. But if you want, you can please check that out. Um, again, these are small improvement of success workshops. So there's still a couple more. There's one on the 24th um, too for managing your time. So please check that one out. Um, the service learning virtual symposium. If you um, wanna be a part of that, it's due on the 28th. So please check that out. Um, the Naliko registration, um, their registration ends on March 12th. So if you guys wanna be a part of that, it's a student showcase a showcase of student research and scholarship and creative work. So if you want to learn more, again, um, check out that QR code. Um, um, last chance to apply for a 5,000 graduate Marianist scholarship. Um, the deadline is March 26. So if you um, need um, financial help, definitely check that out students and you can contact Samantha. Um, vocation for justice with, oh, that's the Mary Nish leadership. That's the next one coming up on March 31st at 1230 PM. So, and then finally, these are our mystical rose oratory. If you're um, seeking to receive your sacraments, you can talk to Father Marty or email us or want to help in the liturgy, be an altar server. You can also let us know. And finally, follow um, OSAL on Instagram and all their social media, as well as us. And we have a new um, link tree so you can find the recordings for all our um, Share the Joys on YouTube and on our website. Um, we should upload them. So for those of you guys who know students that weren't able to come to Share the Joy but want to um, check it out, it'll be on there. Um, thank you. That's all. Thank you. That's a lot. That's wonderful, wonderful work you're doing there. That's good. And thank you all for having me uh, tonight. I've enjoyed being with you. Uh, hopefully soon we can meet again in person, but uh, nevertheless, we do what we can. So blessings. The Lord be with you. And with your May spirit. Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful Lent and a beautiful Easter. Mahalo, Bishop. Thank, Thank you. you. Bishop. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right. Take care.